This is four reasons why a ban on ChatGPT may not be the right approach. The most recent iteration of ChatGPT was released on November 30th, 2022. ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence bot or AI bot that was trained on an enormous body of text in order to be able to respond interactively and intelligently with human beings. Within one week, ChatGPT had acquired over 1 million users. And as K-12 school started winding down the year in 2022, ChatGPT was making big headlines around the world. You've likely heard the buzz already, but in case you have yet to try it, ChatGPT is to Google what Google was to a set of encyclopedias. Google is a master curator of information, but ChatGPT has the ability to aggregate that information and mobilize it in dynamic functional commands on a level that the world has never seen before. If you want to see more of ChatGPT at work and just find out how much it can do, watch this video to see eight use cases for ChatGPT in the school environment. Of of course, ChatGPT is just the latest manifestation of growth that we've seen in AI in recent years, and we know it's only going to get better. So how should schools respond to ChatGPT and other AI tools like it? Well, one school district had an answer. We were only a few bright days into the shiny new calendar year of 2023 when the New York City Department of Education came down with this ruling. ChatGPT shall be banned in all schools. Now listen, I can understand the fears and concerns that educators have about how ChatGPT will impact learning in the classroom. I think we all share those concerns. To some extent, ChatGPT and other tools like it have permanently impacted the way that I view and will read student writing for the rest of my teaching days. How can it not? But I think a blanket ban is not the right approach. And here's why. Let's start at the most basic practical level. Reason number one why a ban on ChatGPT is not the right approach? A ban on a particular website is practically impossible. Think about it. Schools or districts can only blacklist websites on school-specific Wi-Fi networks, meaning that students can still access ChatGPT and other AI tools like it whenever they're home or off campus or using a device with access to a data network. Since students can still obviously access ChatGPT for homework, a ban on ChatGPT as a website doesn't really mean too much. In fact, one has to wonder if a ban on a particular website like ChatGPT by schools or districts is actually more counterproductive to the aims of the ban by raising the profile of the forbidden fruit in question. Hmm. Reason number two why a ban on ChatGPT by schools or districts may not be the right approach, whack-a-mole isn't sustainable. ChatGPT has certainly grabbed the headlines as of late, but there are plenty of similar AI tools already out there, and more are appearing all the time. Quillbot.com is an AI paraphrasing tool tool that can paraphrase entire essays and make plagiarism checkers basically useless. One of my favorites, tinywow.com, offers a whole suite of free AI writing tools. There are also plenty of other premium writing services already available, including jasper.ai, shakespeare.ai, and others like it. And while you may say, well, I don't think students will use these services because they are paid and they require payment, it's only a matter of time before they start moving to a freemium model if they haven't already, which would make them available to students as well. Reason number three why a ban on ChatGPT is not the right move for schools or districts is that like Wi-Fi, Google, and YouTube before it, ChatGPT is just the latest step forward for learning tools in the classroom. It wasn't that long ago that schools and districts were banning YouTube on their Wi-Fi networks rather than leveraging the world's largest and growing library of video resources to support student learning. They opted for the safety of zero exposure rather than do the hard work of teaching best practices and applying skills of viewing discrimination. Even before the arrival of YouTube, many schools and districts wrestled with the question of having a Wi-Fi network at all. As silly as some of these questions may seem to us today, they were important conversations at the time. Of course, Google itself has become a much smarter search engine over the years, now serving up large font answers to closed questions like, how far is the sun from the earth, before listing any search results below. Because of this Google effect, schools and educators have been moving away for some time now from a focus on acquisition of Googleable information to the development of more nuanced approaches to learning that involve critical thinking. For example, instead of asking students to memorize the names of all 45 presidents, content that is very Googleable, we might ask them to critique the legacies of different presidents based on current policy issues. Don't get me wrong, content
Content is still important for students to learn. We know that a mass of information and knowledge forms a necessary foundation in order for students to learn more, make distinctions, draw conclusions, and establish new theories about their world today. But the power of Google has put downward pressure on the importance of content memorization. Of that, there can be little doubt. Like YouTube and Google before it, ChatGPT is just the latest application that will make us rethink the nature of teaching, learning, and assessment in the classroom. These powerful tools and technologies are here to stay, so let's embrace them. And the fourth reason why a ban on ChatGPT is not the right approach for schools and districts is that it sends all the wrong signals about learning and mindset. ChatGPT has forced the world to reckon with an AI tool that can complete complex tasks in seconds. Who will be the most excited, do you think, to play with this tool and experiment over time? That's right, it'll be our students. Students of all ages will share our childlike fascination with ChatGPT and all the possibilities that it affords. And well, they should. This is a technology that will only grow in impact and influence throughout their lifetimes. Sadly, I feel that a school or district ban sends all the wrong signals about the nature of technology and learning. It just feels like fear over curiosity, defense over offense, convention over adaptation. It looks a little too much like head in the sand, I hope this goes away kind of thinking, and that's just not the growth mindset. It's not the posture of a lifelong learner. Now, I'm not suggesting that teachers should give students unfettered, unrestricted, uncritical access to these tools all the time. There will still be cases, for example, where teachers ask students to pull out paper and pencil and demonstrate creative, critical thinking in classrooms just as we do today. But I think teachers should give students other opportunities just to play with ChatGPT, to experiment. Think of it, teachers, students, sitting side by side, engaging, experimenting, and discussing what ChatGPT will look like in the future and how this technology will change the nature of learning and work in productive, powerful ways. Whenever I come up against a difficult decision in our school, I run it through a tried and true filter. Number one, what is best for our kids? And number two, what is best for learning? Simply banning the latest technology from our schools doesn't feel like a satisfying answer to either of those questions. Listen, there's no doubt that the path ahead will be challenging at times and these tools will require new approaches to teaching and learning. But growth doesn't happen in the comfort zone. So let's step out of the comfort zone and lean into something we all do pretty well, learn. Together, we'll shape the nature of teaching and learning in 2023. That's a conversation I'm excited to be a part of, and I hope you are too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.